So, before break, we started focusing a lot on multiplying basic facts. When we think about multiplying basic facts, the ideas that we learned about can be organized into a few categories. And the categories that help us understand the basic facts when we're multiplying are ideas like the properties of multiplication. One of the properties that we started talking about was the identity property. When we think of identity, sometimes we might think of the picture on our driver's license or our first names or something like that. And the identity property for numbers is a lot like that because anytime we multiply a number by one, the answer is always that number. So two times one equals two, one million times one equals what everybody? One million. one million. And that's what the identity property means. It means anytime we multiply a number by one, the answer is that number. So the identity of the number stays the same. Another thing that we've talked a little bit about is the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property tells us that it doesn't matter what order we multiply numbers in, we always get the same answer. So we might demonstrate the commutative property of multiplication using an example like 3 times 4. We know that 3 times 4 equals 12, but the commutative property comes into play if we were to flip-flop our factors. 4 times 3 is also 12. Even though we reverse the order of the numbers that we're multiplying, the answer or the product remains the same, 12. And that's what the commutative property tells us. The last thing that we talked a little bit about before break was the zero property of multiplication. The number zero is in the name, so that gives us a hint that the zero property means that any time we multiply a number by zero, the answer is zero. zero. So if we have 100 times zero, the answer is always zero. If we have 1,457 times zero, the answer will be zero. Any number times zero is zero, and that's what the zero property of multiplication tells us. And these are all examples of how we understand and come to learning our basic facts of multiplication. Basic facts are typically what we use to refer to multiplying single digit times single digit numbers. So examples like three times four, two times one, five times two. And since we've had the chance to learn a little bit about multiplying basic facts, we're gonna layer on some additional things about multiplication so that we can start getting into multiplying by two digits. And a good place to start whenever we're multiplying by two-digit numbers is to think about the ideas of multiplying by factors of 10. To show us this concept, we need to see if we can find patterns. So, let's start here. Two times one, will you guys chant back to me the answer? Two. It's two. Two times 10, so if I have the number 10 two times, 2 times 10 is 20. 20. 2 times 100, this gets a little bit trickier. I know that 100 one time is 100, so if I add another 100 onto that, I get 200. 200. And 2 times 1,000, well, I know that 1,000 one time is 1,000. What if I add another 1,000 onto that? Yes, 2,000. Now. As we thought about each of these problems in isolation, you guys were great with your number sense and you were able to find each answer. But what I would like you to notice now is the pattern of our products. Product, remember, is the answer to a multiplication problem. And when I look at my product, I notice that 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 10, I see that 2 again, but this time we added 1 zero. 2 times 100, I see that 2, but this time I added two zeros to my product. 2 times 1,000, I see that my answer, my product, begins with 2, but now we have added three zeros to our product. 
You'll notice that when you're multiplying by factors of 10, friends, your answers, your products, will have the same number of zeros as the factors in your problem. Do you notice that 2 times 10, we see 1 0 here and 1 0 in our product? Then 2 times 100, we see 2 zeros here and then 2 zeros in our answer. And lastly, 2 times 1,000, there's three zeros in our problem and then three zeros in our product. Let's see if the pattern holds true when we think about it with fives. Are you guys ready? Five times one five. is five. Five times 10, if I count by tens, five times 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And when I look at the next one, if I were to think about the pattern that we've been following, I know 5 times 1 is 5. How many zeros do you think I should add to my answer, Rosie? Um, two. No, 2. 2. So when I add 2 zeros to my product, what is my answer to that one, everybody? 500. Let's see if we can apply the pattern now when multiplying by 1,000. 5 times 1 I know is 5. And then I see three zeros in my, in my factor of my problem. How many zeros should I add to my product, my answer? Say it, friends. Three. 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 5,000. Five times 1,000 is 5,000. And what we're looking at here when we're multiplying by factors of 10 is the relationship between the number of zeros in the factors of our problem to the number of zeros that are the resulting answer in our products. So 5 times 10, we see 1 0. We have a z 1 0 in our product. 5 times 100, we see 2 zeros in our problem. There are 2 zeros in our answer or our product. 5 times 1,000, we counted 3 zeros in the problem, and we ended up with 3 zeros in our product. Let's see if we can challenge ourselves. To this bonus question. What if we had 6 times 300? In order to use a pattern like this to help us answer a multiple of 10 multiplication problem like this, where the number 300 is a multiple of 10 and we're multiplying it by 6, I start off asking myself the basic fact. Do I know what 6 times 3 is? I do. 6, 12, 18. I know when I count up 6 three times, I get 18. Now the trick is to know how many zeros I need to add to my product. When I look at my question, I see Drew's hand is up. Drew, how many zeros do you notice in our problem? Two. So how many zeros should I add to my answer? Two. two. When I add two zeros, my product that I end up with is 1,800, and that is the correct answer. We start thinking about the basic fact, and then we can use the fact that this base 10 system ha has zeros at the end to help us add zeros to our product to come up with the correct answer. Let's do another example. Want to? Let us try one now. And I'm going to stand over on this side. What if I have 4 times 700? We would start off thinking about our basic fact, ignoring the zeros and starting with our basic fact, 4 times 7. Do I know what 4 times 7 is? I do. If I even count in my head or use my fingers, I know that when I count up 7 four times, 7, 14, 21, 28 is my answer. I know 4 times 7 is 28. Now I need to think about how many zeros I need to include to compensate for the fact that I'm multiplying by 700, not just 7. Isa, how many zeros do I need to add in this example? Two. I do need to add two zeros. And my answer ends up 2,800, which is the product of 4 times 700. 
And I'm going to pause there because this is the first step to getting us closer to multiplying by two-digit numbers. So